Hello, welcome to another video, making Songbringer. I'm in the last bits of making this game. Just getting the iOS version all finished up. Today I'm going to be working on the equipment menu. So uh, for this mobile iOS version, you can drag uh, stuff that is equipable into your current equipment. That'll make it a lot easier. Um, than it currently is right now it's like um, it just it's kind of based on the uh, the desktop version where uh, you would use your button like press the a button to hold down to equip something and uh, so it kind of works as it kind of as it is right now it's going extremely slow because where I'm streaming and uh, and running this in the simulator um, So yeah, it kind of works right now, but it's not at all intuitive and it just isn't right for mobile. So right now, if you like, if you hold down on a piece of equipment that you already have equipped, it'll unequip it automatically. And then if, like, if you want to try and equip something else, it can equip things also, but it only equips to where it automatically thinks it should. So basically, it's just going to be a lot easier if you can just drag, like say I want the the uh, cactus equipped to the Y button, I would just drag it into this Y slot right here. So that'll be pretty easy. And then these, these other things will maintain as they are. Like you can just tap on that and be like, oh cool, that's the charge. Tap on that, oh, those are boots. Oh, I didn't even notice, you can't really tap on, oh, you can you tap on things? You can tap, but it's like really tapping the wrong stuff over here. Okay, so there's some stuff to get done with this, but the most important part is being able to drag equipment. That'll make uh, a kind of like be one of the most important things to do right now in the, in the iOS version because pretty much everything else is looking pretty good. I'm I got this running on my iPhone and I've tried this out and um, it feels pretty good. I like having this D-pad about here. The, these buttons, um, and even I always thought that you wouldn't be able to have the L and R buttons on iOS. You just have to, you would have to do without with them. But it actually, you can, you can use them. And uh, everything is set up right now where you can actually move things in your settings. So, like, I can move the L button anywhere, the R button anywhere, any of these buttons, even the D pad, can be moved around the screen. And also, your, um, your courage and the map indicator too can also be moved. So I'll have to create some kind of interface for that where you can move things around. But uh, in the meantime, the most important thing here is the equipment menu. So that's what I'll be working on right now, just coding that up. What's up, professional novice? How you doing, man? How you been? So I got something started here where when a touch moves, been busy? Yeah, it's been a while. The game is coming along really great. The um, Steam version has its uh, free DLC just came out. So it's pretty much finished. Like Songbringer was released back, se back last September. Um, now it's got that this whole free DLC with tons of new content and um, the Xbox and PlayStation 4 versions have been updated. They also have the free DLC and uh, now I'm working on the iOS version. Um, the uh, soundtrack is also finished. I just have to get that published. I think I'm going to use um, Bandcamp and Steam and a few other things to publish the soundtrack. But other than that, like Songbringer will be all wrapped up and finished here probably by this summer sometime. And I'll be starting on the next game. So I'm pretty excited. So to get this dragging, you need to be able to track a drag. Oh, first thing I need to do is actually stop the existing equipment thing from equipping and unequipping. I 
I think that's here. I'm just going to set a breakpoint to try and catch it and figure out what I need to disable there. So, um, <clears throat> I've also got things just even more sped up on iPhone by, uh, I figured out that the simulator, you can actually load data from anywhere on your hard drive because essentially it's running a little OS X app or Mac OS now it's called, whatever. Um, but it, essentially it's, you can access data from anywhere on your hard drive. So I basically just set the game's root folder to song ringer folder so it can load all its assets straight from that folder this is only if it's running in the simulator. And that really speeds up uh, the install phase of trying to install the game onto the simulator, which you pretty much have to do every time you, every time you run it. You have to install it and then launch it because uh, your code's changed, you know, stuff like that. So running it from the root folder is another speed improvement. So it's just a lot faster than it used to be. It's still hella slow compared to Mac development or Windows development. Okay, so I'm gonna unequip an item. Hopefully, yes, good, we hit this breakpoint. Oh, no, not that one. Oh, it does hit that breakpoint. Does it hit this other one? Yeah, okay, cool. Oh, this is coming from the tick, though. That thing's on tick. Yeah, okay, here it is. Interface of Steam. I think this is going to be inside. Whew, gosh, it's a huge function. Gear, yeah, it's in the, in the gear. Right, okay, so this is where it's it's looping over. <coughs> <coughs> oh, <coughs> excuse me. Checking if it uh, released any buttons. Okay. I wonder how it knows it released that button, though. And this gear equip item thing. Oh, right, right. Here's how it knows. This block of code. If it's mobile looks through which menu item is being held and it converts that into a button down. Okay, so this is all managed here in the interfaces of gear equipment item thing. So what, if anything, needs to be there? I'm thinking maybe all of this whole ONTIC interface shouldn't even be in here. Let's just try this. We'll disable all this ONTIC for now. If it's mobile. We're going to go ahead and handle all of this in the input mobile. I think we can get rid of Xcode for the moment, just to be a little faster there on the CPU. OK, so now we can edit code here in Vim. And we want to be in interfaces, I mean, uh, input mobile. Let's close all this stuff. Just focus on this. Cool. Okay, 
So when a touch starts, we need to register which, um, like which item you started dragging or touching. And then And then when a touch moves, we need to move. I might as well just kind of pseudo code this, or at least comment comment code it sort of. Register Wolfski. What's up? How you doing? Did I get skinnier? No, actually, a little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How you been, man? So, register item that started. Touch. Indie dev, yep. The indie dev life. You just get skinnier, older. You graduated, now you're unemployed. Yay! Where'd you graduate from? Was it, um, are we talking about university? So when the touch begins, when you do that, when touch moves. Yeah, game design. Right on, man. You got a game design? What do they call those? Degree? Degrees? What else do they call them? I guess it's just a degree, right? God, it's been too long <laughs> since I've been... Since I've been to university, college and all that. Touch moves. Um, move the item with, move the item sprite with the touch. Touch ends. Yeah, you're technically a scientist. You're technically not that far from being a doctor, neither, right? Just you need to go to like six more years of school or something like that, and you could be Dr. Wolfski. You really, really don't feel like you are? Hey, man. Does anyone? When the touch ends, if it is... over equipment or equipables then drop the item you'll pass drop the item Um, unequip unequip it if was equipped
unequip drop slot if equipping equip new item if equipping. Basically that's what we need to do. Oh, oh, we also need to um um update interface choice IDs, menu, item, locations, positions, that kind of thing. I think that's what we need to do total. I'm importing Songwringer for the Switch. I wish I could answer that question for you. That's all I can say right now. I'll say also that I get asked that all the time. And it's, ugh, I wish I could say more. I wish I could say more. I wish I could say more. So, we need to like, recognize, so uh, I guess a function to find the current menu item is a good thing. Yes, there you go. And if and it needs to be the right menu item too. But yeah, so all you do is find um, find an interface choice, really. Okay, you can write this function. Gosh, I guess it's, it's really helping to have this whole um, pseudocode and stuff because my brain is quite slow today. I did this thing yesterday where I only ate green apples and then at the end of the night, oh man, it makes my stomach nauseous even thinking about it. At the end of the night, I drank half a cup of lemon juice and half a cup of olive oil. Oh, it's so nasty. But it's this thing that helps you clean up, clean out your liver. If you do that all day, like, whatever, it's a liver cleanse. So that's why today I'm kind of like, Rrr. so it's really helping to just have like some pseudo code up there and just code slowly today. That's where I'm at today. Slow coding. So we'll return choice pointer. Get choice from a screen position.
And we might as well stash stash um stash a starting choice. These can have their own default values. Even though I'm resetting it right there. Ah. This is super pragmatic. But oh well. All right. Held touch, said held touch. Is it touch anywhere? No. Pause, here we go. Save, starting choice. Start choice equals this get choice from that position. I think I think I'm currently wrong in where these things are being pro like the it might have to be offset by it might need to be some sort of offset basically. <clears throat> oh, it would be nice to have um, let's go inner turn on interface verbosity. This draws some rectangles around all the mobile choices. It's really nice to have. All right. I mean, it, it would be good to start checking this, but fuck it. Let's just keep coding. <clears throat> so we need to basically move <clears throat> if if we're dragging So we want to drag drag choice around the screen, sort of. <clears throat> you made a huge mistake while picking up programming? <clears throat> you went on making advanced programs without a full understanding of the fundamentals. So you ran stuff that made no sense. You had no understanding of why it works. Oh. Well, what are you doing now? Are you going back to the fundamentals? What would you define as the fundamentals? Yeah, oh good, well you're good. If you're going back to the basics, man, that's good. Sometimes you... Sometimes it actually is exciting to just try and try out new advanced things and realize that you don't have enough of a grip on the basics and then you, and then you just know you go back to the basics with the with the confidence of like I need to do this, you know. Okay, understanding the relationship between the class and its parent. Yes, very important. Why they work together, how they work. Pointers, hell yeah. Nice. Good job, man. Memory management, yes. Good stuff. 
Yeah, I can I can totally get you, man. If you don't have a firm grasp on class hierarchy, pointers, memory management, programming, you'd be, you'd be like willy nilly, like what? Why did that work? What the heck just happened? <coughs> Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I guess I kind of got lucky there at the beginning. Maybe I'm a, I'm a curious kid or something. I was a curious kid about it. Because I just, I, I read this one book that taught me the fundamentals of C programming. And it really stuck. I understood pointers right away. There was all these exercises in the book and I did all of the exercises. You know, coding was just like this passion for me. I was like a 14 year old kid and I loved it. I was like, whoa, this is so cool. I loved pointers and I loved the C language. And even though my code was really ugly back then, I understood most of it. Yeah, I hear you. It's hard to be great at anything if you can't explain it, for sure. Yeah, that's one thing that's actually helped me a lot. And I've grown over the few years here I've been streaming is that I can I explain things a lot which not only helps me understand the programming better and the music and the art uh, but it also helps me with this sort of um, you know how when you're programming you're thinking a lot and you're mostly internal about it you're, you're all these thoughts are running through your head you're conceptualizing how the code works and visualizing things and stuff like that. It really helps to talk, talk it all through because it, it, it turns that internal thought into an actual verbal expression. And it really helps me express myself in not only programming, but in other areas of life. So I don't know. Yeah. Streaming has been a real positive thing for me. It was very difficult at first though. It was very, very difficult to talk through programming tasks and stuff like that. Zybook. Last time I watched she was before the official launch. Whoa, man. I was coding in my closet, that's right. Have I moved? Yes, I have moved. Um, thanks for saying I look great, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm currently um, I'm currently living in Thailand for a few months. I've been here for about four months, and I got about well five months now almost. And now I got one more month, and then I go back to the United States. I'm just kind of retreating, if you will. I'm single. So it's a, it's a I'm a newly single retreat. I'm on a new, newly single retreat time. So my retreat's almost over. I gotta go back. Thank you, man. I've been working on it. I've been working out a lot. I've been lifting weights three times a week. I've been trying to trying to relax a lot more because releasing Songbringer was very stressful. Releasing any video game is a super duper stressful thing. Especially when I mean when you have expectations, like you think your game's gonna do so well and then it doesn't, and you're like, damn, it's super it's super um, disheartening, but, you know, my game did better than most indie games these days do, gosh, it sucks, because most indie developers make less than minimum wage right now, with their, with their games, and I barely made more than minimum wage, yes, overall, it's been very successful, hell yeah, Songbringer's been a complete success, um, but not a major success. It's been like a minor success. You could say it's an underrated ex success. Even Rock Paper Shotgun called it called Songbringer an underrated game. You know, they're like, why aren't more people playing this game? 
It's good. But there's just so many fucking games out there right now, dude. There's a shitload of video games released on Steam now. Especially since Steam Direct came out, like, just a few months before Song Ringer was released. And you can see the daily number of games that got released on Steam went from, like, 5 to 10 a day, to, like, 20 a day, to now there's, like, 40 a day. Soon there'll be like 60 to 80 video games released per day on Steam, and not all of them are like games you would buy or even consider. Some of them are just pure games you would not even ever consider buying. So it's a tough market, man. It's a super tough market right now. It's like if you want to succeed in making your own indie games, like good luck. Have I been able to live from it as I wished? As I wish, no. Have I been able to live from it? Yes. I'm very lucky to have a, the publisher I do. They're backing me. They're supporting me. They're helping me release it on PlayStation and Xbox. Their name is Double Eleven. They're amazing. And uh, having their support is probably the bet, one of the best things that's happened from Songbringer. Um, but yeah, I, I wished for more. I wished for you know some good success. Because you look at... You used to be able to look at Steam Spy and see the similar games like Hyperlight Drifter or even Axiom Verge, just like an indie game that did did well. But those games were released in like 2015 and 16 when things were much different than they were in late 2017. Only a year later, things had changed so much. Yeah, and everyone just wants to play Fortnite. But just like six months ago, people just wanted to play PUBG. You know what I mean? And then Fortnite comes along. I know what you mean. Yeah, it does it does change constantly and it is quite a challenge. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the future is going to be like for indie developers. It does not seem good. Right, the the barrier to entry has really, really lowered how how anyone anyone can make a game now. But like, not everyone can make a great game, you know. But everyone can kind of like there needs I don't know what the heck needs to happen, man. It's like there either needs to be more curation, or there needs to be less people making games, or there needs to be. A better system of filtering the games, a better store, fuck, I don't know. Yeah, creativity is hard, man. There's art there's already so many games and genres that have been explored. It's like it's really tough to do anything that's actually innovative. But, you know, that said, the passion of making video games is something I totally enjoy and I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. I like making music. I could, I could be a full-time musician. But that's the same kind of thing, you know what I mean? Making music is the same thing. It's just, there's lots and lots and lots of hobby musicians out there. So, I don't know. <laughs> it's. Being a creative person that's kind of like an indie creative person is, I don't know, it's kind of like the starving artist of today. Only I'm not technically starving. That's for sure. I'm not starving. I can eat every day. Yeah, Nintendo, Naughty Dog. I hear you. There are some pretty creative publishers. I like Blizzard. Blizzard does a pretty good quality job of making their games. But they really haven't done anything creative in a while. I guess Overwatch was kind of, well, is can you count Overwatch as being creative? I don't know. Is Overwatch just another shooter? Or does it have some really creative stuff in it? I'm not, I haven't played it. Yeah. Oh yeah, Pal oh paladin or paladins. What 
with the star choice not equal to no pointer right yeah It's weird because, like, even though games, like, kind of are copies of each other sometimes, they're, they're all unique, too. You know what I mean? Like, you could say Overwatch is a copy of Paladins or whatever, or you could say that, I don't know, you could say that Fortnite is a copy of PUBG, but... In their own way, every game is unique. You know what I mean? Every game was created by teams of people that are putting in art assets and they're programming and they're throwing in music and like different art and stuff like that. So you could say that every game is unique too. So it's like it's hard to it's hard to say, you know, it's it's hard to like critique the gaming industry. You know? There's two sides of this coin. Okay, so we just need to basically loop through the children of this choice and move the sprite to the current position of the cursor or the, the finger yeah it does it's so much work to make games and most people don't ever see it yeah, it's the same thing with music uh, music and and movies too but especially movies like gosh have you seen the list of like visual artists that work on some of the new movies it's like what hundreds and hundreds of people work on these cgi characters and stuff backgrounds and photography Okay, so we're looping over the children of the choice. Dynamically casting them to sprites. Sprite's not equal to null pointer, then we'll move it. Alright, so we got that. Let's go sprite, set position, pause. Alright, so there's a couple bit a couple things that are probably wrong. One of them is I think that we're getting the the choice needs to be offset. So that code's probably got us something wrong with it. And then this, I'm not sure if it needs to be set to exactly the same position as the touch, but let's just try it. Let's see what happens. So yeah, we need to register that the choice, the, the touch starts at a certain item. We need to move that item around the screen by dragging the sprite. And then when we drop the choice, we need to swap out the equipment, swap out the menu items and sprites and all that kind of stuff. All right, let's run this. Hell yes to being able to run from the command line. Oh, so good. Still slow as hell though. 
while I'm streaming. It's a little, it's a lot faster while I'm not streaming, but it's still slow as hell because the simulator cannot use your GPU. Wah, wah. Why didn't they make it so the simulator could just use the GPU? I guess they want it to like really be, they want it to be the real authentic thing, huh? Okay, so we're gonna drag an item. This is the, the first part, it's probably not even gonna work. Right, it's not even, yeah, it's, it's not even registering the choice. Yeah, I think it, the, the, since we're, we don't have the first bit of code working, yeah, see it, it clicked on this fire thing. Oh, what? What the heck is going on? What? It's so hard to tell what is happening. I'm just like clicking on random. It's so yeah. The first bit of code is definitely not working. Let's step through it with the debugger. So when we look for a choice, I think the choice needs to be offset. Its bounding box for each menu item might need to be offset by its parent. Let's write some code to just do that. And then we'll step through that. That sounds like a good plan. So we'll go auto parent equals menu item get parent while parent not equal to null pointer rec dot oh what's it origin rec dot origin plus equals parent get position and then parent equals parent get parent all right set a breakpoint here <clears throat> This is where I wish it would run faster. What? Patience. Patience, young Padawan learner. Patience you must have. Developing for iOS is slow. Slow it is. Okay, so I'm just gonna try starting to drag on the sword, but it's probably gonna be 
See, we're not even registering a touch. What the hell? What's up with that? Okay, we're not even hitting a breakpoint. That's, that's super weird. Why is that? Let's go when we look for the star choice, set a breakpoint there. Huh. Touch began, what the heck? It's not even hitting that? Oh, is it? Oh, it might be like a... What? I don't get it. This should be hitting this breakpoint right here. This touch began runs for anything. There we go. What? Now it's working? I'm so confused. I guess I got lucky with where the hell I touched or something. Parent. Okay, we got we got erect for something. Choice ID twenty two. Which could be an item. I'm not sure. Menu item. Rect. Origin. Size seventeen by twenty one. That's got to be an, a menu item, or I mean, an item. So X67, Y184. And the current position that we're looking for is 61, 170. So it's first parent had no position. Oh, that had a position of two pixels. Oh, there you go. See, now it's like origin negative 53, and that's just got to be wrong. Negative 54. Okay, so that's, that didn't work. Huh, well, oh, dude, I guess I need to make this visual. So 
So I know we have interface verbosity on. Right? Yeah. Okay. So let's let's turn on inter let's make interface verbosity so that it um that it also turns on touch interface verbosity. Here when we create the event listener Grab the verbosity. And if it is verbose, then every time we update the interface listener guy, Let's make a function for this. Uh, what do we call that? Let's just call it debug. If verbosity is less than or equal to zero, return. Otherwise, we're going to create a string stream output our data and stuff like the current touch position that's the first thing I want to see Oh man, you can have multiple touches. Gosh, I guess it's time to upgrade the whole touch thing then. We need our own like... <coughs> What the heck? Uh, hold on. CC touch. No. Damn it.
There's a CC touch. There it is. It's base CC touch. Just want to look at cctouch.h. Okay, so CC Touch has What to call it though? Finger? I don't know. I'll call it struck finger, because we might as well. We got an int ID. We got a vec2. Pause. We got a VEC2 start pause. Choice pointer. Start choice. And this is where we probably are gonna be able to get rid of this held touch thing. But for now, I'm just gonna push all these back into their own fingers. Oh, touch IDs too, this could probably get rid, get rid of. So we'll create a vector of fingers. Here we push the finger. I guess we can, uh, it'd be nice to have a create. Or, uh... Oh, I need to take a break real quick. <clears throat>
Five seconds until recover. Recover. Five seconds until mobilize. Mobilize. Five seconds until recover. Recover. Five seconds until mobilize. Mobilize. Five seconds until recover. Recover. Five seconds until mobilize. Mobilize. Five seconds until recover. Recover. Five seconds until mobilize. Mobilize. Five seconds until recover. Recover. Five seconds. Workout complete. Okay, so a constructor to make it easier to create these IDs. Actually, we could just take a touch pointer. So, ID. ID equals touch. Touch get ID. Pause equals start pause equals uh, get location. And we might as well get the choice for this too. So I already wrote that function. Oh yeah, this does not need to be a member function at all. So we can move this over to Could be a static method of finger actually. The 
this might as well just be choice. Ah, uh, yes, choice and star choice might be actually the way to go. Now we could have a static function which updates the finger. Where you'd patch it, pass in a vector of fingers. And a touch pointer. There we found the finger, so update the finger. Might as well get a pause, make a function to get a position from a Convert to GL. What? Whatever, whatever. Let's make it a VEC2, not a cons VEC2. Position of a touch pointer. So if the touch is null or the director is null, just return back to zero. Otherwise, return the converted GL location. Okay, so now we're updating the position of the finger. And 
might as well update the choice too. Okay, there, we've got a whole structure now that tracks a touch ID, a touch is, well, it's called a finger, so the finger's ID, finger's position, the start position, the choice, and the start choice. And all that's kind of in a nice, neat class with some nice static methods which are accessible to other classes. We've got an array of, or a vector of fingers, and now all we gotta do is push back some fingers when we start touch, update the fingers whenever we move and remove a finger when we're done oh, so one more function So we just need to check uh, when for this remove function, we erase if v var name do erase code. Okay, so if the vector is fingers, var name is finger, if finger dot id equals touch get id. Might as well do this. There, we got a remove function as well. We might as well add a debug function too. Or log, I guess. Oh yeah, so we would log out be another static method. Whoa. Const vector finger ref fingers string stream s s. All right. So for each. For each finger. We would go SS. All right, so finger ID. Start pause. Current pause.
And the choice. Okay, it'd be nice to know the choice. I think the choice ID. We gotta open up interfaces Steam for this. Okay, we're in the right method. Oh yeah, C.ID is the number of item types. Okay, that is how it works. I thought that was how it worked, good. So we can just look up the, the item ID straight from there. Okay, if the finger dot choice is not equal to null pointer, then we want to output space and the current item for that choice. All right, yeah, I've been trying to like not write this function for like the last five minutes, so I just write it. Let's call this get item from a choice pointer. So if the choice ID is valid as an item type, then cast that to an item type. Otherwise, return item none. It should be negative one. Oh, none is zero. Okay. There we go, okay, so. C 
So we got finger get item. Finger dot choice. We got start item. Uh, this is just if item is not equal to null pointer. I mean, okay, item none. Then we're outputting words, look up words, okay, items, right? What? Oh no, it's constants. Get item key. Supposed to be item. This one's supposed to be start item. Start item is not equal to none. I'll put the start item. Item is not equal to none, then I'll put this whole little diggly do to like that. All right. <clears throat> okay. Now we need to track the fingers or push back a new finger. Update the finger. Finger update. And finger remove. Oh, this must be fingers. And lastly, the debug method. If verbosity is greater than or equal to one, string stream, Fingers, log, and game, scene, set, tick label, Whew, let's see if that even compiles. That was a lot of code. But <laughs> so if you're following along on, on YouTube, on this video, or on the stream, or whatever, what I just did there for like the last half an hour 
was I had ran the game and it was super confusing. I couldn't tell what was going on because of how slow the simulator is. And basically, I just needed some kind of visual way to debug all this code. So I went through and I created a new structure called finger, which can track where each touch is, your finger is on the touch screen, track its ID, its position, whatever choice it's connected to. And then I created a whole bunch of methods to update the fingers, remove fingers, create new fingers, log the fingers. And then finally, I'm logging that to the screen in a bunch of debug data, so I, if there's a verbosity on, so that I can see visually what the heck is going on rather than just trying to like figure it out by debugging and setting breakpoints and stuff like that. And I'm gonna need these finger structure later on to really make this whole, um, these touchscreen controls really robust and all that. What? Expected parameter declarator? Oh, you just can't use a... You can't do a constructor in one of these... Uh, what do you call that? A default value for a structure? I don't know. What? It takes it back to... What? Oh, no, that's not this line. We're at line 57. Oh, that's a const finger. Oh. Line 108.
shit balls. Why isn't it showing anything? Does it even have... Oh uh, no, controller intervals for both of these off. Interfa oh! I know what's up. Interface for both of the... Needs to be on settings iOS, not settings Mac. There we go. Let's run that again. There we go, cool. Finger! Zero! Okay, I need the space between those. Yay, good! We got it updating the finger. And I can like, let go and it lets, okay, this is cool. Let's see if it's working at all for these choices though. This is where we're up. Right, so we got it's not even it's not even going oh and check it out all those choices are in the wrong places what the heck is going on why isn't it working I'm tapping here I'm tapping everywhere nothing's happening oh there I tap on the right half of the screen it seems to be working that's working what does it just take a while to kick in what the hell's going on oh no there it's not working oh now it is I don't know what the heck is going on here but it's like taking a long time to kick in this happened last time It's not showing an item at all. Oh, see, now it stopped working. Oh, is it only up here? Maybe there's a zone where it just doesn't work. I don't know. Well, it's a step in the right direction. This really helps to have this debug information on screen. Something's really messed up there on that gear menu. I don't know what's going on. See, it might be something to do with this, but there, where it's like translating it to, into D-pad input. I'm not sure, but at least this is here. I can see where touches are on the screen, which really helps. I can compare those to choice locations and get a much better idea of whether that's accurate. And you can tell there's something definitely wrong over here on the uh, these all these menu items over here. All these little uh, gray boxes are offset a bit, so that's wrong. Yes, uh, Kuras, what's up, man? I have moved. I'm currently in Thailand. Yep, I'm in a little bungalow right now. Yeah, man. So there you go. That's uh that's about 2 hours of streaming. I got to get I got to get some dinner now. 
But um, this is a good start towards having some more robust touch controls and also towards having this whole drag and drop thing. So my goal for today's stream was to get these so you could drag your equipment. You could like, if I want to equip the sword, I could drag the sword into the A slot right there. But we ran into some significant bugs with touch locations and items and layers of nodes inside nodes and stuff. Who knows what the heck is really going wrong. But uh, at least I got it started so I can debug. I don't know what the heck is going on with this, like when you touch in the, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, eventually it will become clear and all these gray boxes will be lined up and all that. So, so yeah, that's it for this stream. Thanks for watching, and uh, Wizard Fu will catch you later, yo. Cheers, everybody.